For years, game developers have created 3D models in a program like Blender before loading them into their games. But we can skip this step completely. In this video, I'll show a new approach that I use to render plants and terrain without importing any models. First, let's look at the default Blender cube. It's composed of a bunch of triangles, which are saved to a file. This data is loaded onto the GPU and rendered to the screen using a shader. Every vertex that the shader processes has a unique ID called GL Vertex ID. This triangle has three vertices with ID 0, 1, and 2. We can use this ID to modify the position of each vertex. The shader on the right has two lines commented out. When uncommented, the top vertex in this triangle will move from left to right. This ID can also be used to create geometry from scratch. First, we'll set the position of each vertex to zero. Then, we'll position each vertex based on its GL vertex ID. We are no longer using model data from Blender, and we have complete control over the position of each vertex. I use the same approach to render terrain, and I'll cover this in another video. Now, let's create a fern by adding more vertices. Our shader code is pretty messy, so let's replace it with some mats. Vertices now move in groups of two along the x-axis, and odd and even-numbered vertices move up and down along the z-axis. Now, let's use this geometry generating technique to create some plants. We want our fern to start in an upright position, so rather than increasing its length, it should increase vertically. We also want our fern to be curved. I'll demonstrate how I achieve this using pitch and your maths. Think of a first-person game you've played. Moving your mouse up and down controls your character's pitch, and moving your mouse left and right controls its yaw. Pitch and yaw values can then be converted to a 3D direction using sine and cos functions. Let's do this in our shader. First, we need to change the way we use GL Vertex ID. It's currently controlling the height of each vertex, but we want it to control distance, which is how far away the vertex is from the bottom of the mesh. The pitch value controls which direction to move, and the distance value controls how far to move. To bend the mesh, we will increase the pitch value as the distance increases. This causes the top of the mesh to bend further than the base of the mesh. These two pitch and bend strength values can now be customized to bend this mesh in different ways. This looks very blocky, but when we put a texture over the top, it disguises the low poly geometry. We now have a leaf that we can use to construct larger vegetation like a fern but we're missing the ability to rotate it horizontally. With the leaf standing upright, let's forget about pitch for now and just look at yaw. Similar to before, GL Vertex ID will no longer modify the X value directly. Instead, it will control the radius of a small circle. When we bend this leaf, its tip moves outwards and has to move in a larger circle. The orange code controls the width of the leaf, and the blue code moves vertices perpendicular to the width. We now have a leaf that we can bend and rotate. It's time to add more leaves. But when I add more vertices, the leaf just keeps getting longer. We need a way to start a new leaf. In the shader, I'll increase the yaw of the leaf by 90 degrees every 10 vertices. This worked, but an uninvited third leaf snuck its way in. This is because the top of the first leaf is now connected to the bottom of the second leaf, therefore creating a new leaf. Let's look at a clearer example. We need to get rid of the two red triangles that are connecting the mesh on the left with the mesh on the right. One way to do this is to render each mesh separately, but for a fern containing 100 leaves, that involves sending 100 separate draw calls to the GPU, which is not optimal. Instead, we can make the triangles invisible. I'll move the bottom right vertex towards the one on the left. The triangle completely disappears. To use this in our leaf mesh, we need to add one more triangle at the start and one more triangle at the end. Then, the trick is to make these two triangles invisible. If we repeat this with our second mesh, we can see the connecting triangles disappear. We've solved our connecting triangle problem and can now render more leaves. Finally, we need to animate them. I want each leaf to move up and down in a wind-like pattern. We can achieve this by modifying the pitch of the leaf based on a sine wave. This looks weird for three reasons. Wind doesn't work like this, every leaf is moving in unison, and every leaf is rigid. 
Let's go back to one leaf and make this wind animation look more natural. A single sine wave is predictable, so let's add and subtract three more sine waves with different intervals. The leaf is still rigid, so I'll subtract the current time by the distance variable. This makes the tip of the leaf lag slightly behind the base of the leaf. Let's add the other leaves back. They are still moving in unison, so we'll offset time again by the leaf ID. The leaf ID is unique per leaf, similar to how GL vertex ID is unique per vertex. The very last step is to enable shadows. I hope you've enjoyed watching. In my next devlog, I'll show you how I use GL vertex ID to render terrain. I'll leave you with a fancy fern montage, and I'll see you in the next video.